here it's interesting to think about uh what climate change is what fossil fuels and what the green party is and what does that really mean to me in all honesty i've always thought like green party were a bunch of hippies that were like barefoot and like like do this smoke weed <laughs> like, whatever. i'm sorry i know it sounds ridiculous but i didn't really know and then the more as i get to think about my future and what does that look like it makes me start to question so what what are you all about are you just here to tell me to walk around and in, in Birkenstocks. Absolutely, that's the whole deal. We've really, it's been a Birkenstock plot from the beginning. You know, we talked about profit before, it's all about that's selling it. selling Birkenstocks is what the whole deal is. No, you know, I, well, I can, I can speak with, uh, because I was a founder of the Green Party of British Columbia in 83, and we were the first Green Party in North America. Um, we started it then out of a sense that we were not walking properly in the world, number one. That was one thing. Number two, we had a sense in British Columbia, still true, of an incredibly polarized politics. We had back then, 83, we had the Social Credit Party and we had the New Democratic Party. And they were, well, on the other side, the New Democratic Party on the left, the Social Credit Party on the right. And they didn't, they shared almost nothing. So when you change governments, you went from this to that, and from that to this, right? And it was just like, we knew that most people don't live either on the extreme right or on the extreme left. Most people live in the middle. Mm -hmm. we, you know, the, one of the big lines of the Green Party forever that people are using now around the world is, we have so much more in common than what we have that divides us. I mean, yeah. it's obvious, right? Mm -hmm. So we couldn't figure out why the hell politics works in a different manner. So we started off with a sensitivity that, you know, cutting down raw logs and shipping it doesn't seem to make a lot of sense. Maybe there's a better way that we can do that and get mm -hmm. some value out of this. And that living on the land with some respect for it is an important part of something. But it doesn't mean that we started off saying, oh yeah, and now it's barefoot only, and you know, and you only get to burn little bits of chips of wood that mm. you've harvested, or whatever it might be. Yeah. We, were, we live in a modern world. But some of the ancient sensitivities to how to live in the world are vital, and it's mm -hmm. time to bring them back. And we live in a world where polarized politics has caused more damage around the planet than almost anything I can think of. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's where we started from, was saying, look, how do we bring people together in mm -hmm. the middle of this thing, and how do we start to have an environmental sensibility that comes into all of our business planning and all of our government planning? That's really what we started as. And we were following examples of Petra Kelly in Germany, who started the Green Party there, and one of her lines was, the Green Party is the anti-party party, right? We're not about building a political party to get power. We're about making a movement work to change the way we do things. And it's a whole different mindset. Even now, you listen to Elizabeth, or listen to all of our candidates, none of us is here to elect Greens so that we have power. Our colleague Adam Olson in Victoria, um, you know that the Green Party in British Columbia now has three members, and then the NDP and the Liberals have about the same number. So the three Greens were able to figure out where, with whom they were going to side during this, this election. And Adam said that that position, which is in normal parlance called the balance of power, he said, no, 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 it's the balance of responsibility mm -hmm. is what it is. And so we just feel, brains feel differently about mm -hmm. this. But we think we have a responsibility to the earth, to our grandchildren, to our children, to do the best we can, all of us, and that people in all different parties have got things to offer. So we think we should be coming together. So rather than standing up saying, you're dumb or you're evil or what you said in 1965 shows that you're not so, you know, mm -hmm. that's just nonsense mm -hmm. what how do we get the best out of everyone to come because we all have more in common than mm -hmm. we have that separates us whites and natives settlers and, and first nations people if we get back to living together as neighbors then we can reconcile we can really reconcile mm -hmm. well that's the way greens work around the world it's kind of in our dna to think about how do we collaborate how do we come together on things knowing that the big constraint on all of it is that we need to live comfortably within the system that the Earth provides. Mm -hmm. We don't have another system. You know, I've got a bumper sticker on my car that says there's no planet B. Mm -hmm. right? This is where we are. This is where we live. We've evolved in this environment. Let's just get back to it and go, oh, 
this, look how glorious this is in which we live. Mm -hmm. Let's just stop destroying it for the sake of short-term greed and power. But how do we go backwards when we're a society of moving forward? We don't go backwards. We, right. go, we go resolutely forward. Uh, and what we, I, I, I don't like political slogans at all. Mm -hmm. But the one we coined in 1983 was not left, not right, but straight ahead. Mm -hmm. right? And what we've now come back to this year is not left, not right, forward together. Mm -hmm. um, we know we got to go forward, and mm -hmm. we know we have to use the best of what we got. We need to use the best technology, the best ways of thinking, the very best stuff we have mm -hmm. to reconcile ourselves with the earth mm -hmm. and with each other. But those goals are clear. Yeah. And, and, and we know that we're facing, as we said earlier, this massive economic transition mm -hmm. as we move off fossil fuels and get into renewable resources. We know that's going to change the way everything in the world works. Mm -hmm. think, of, think of the people in the third world in what we used to call the third world, now we call the developing world or whatever they're called these days, mm -hmm. who, where girls will be able to study at night because they'll have solar power. Mm -hmm. You know, every single thing in the world says that educating girls, girls, is the transformational change that happens in economies around the world. Educating girls. So think of what that can mean. Yeah. Think of all of these things. So the green philosophy is it's not all about Birkenstocks. There's a bunch <laughs> of it, which is about, isn't it nice to sit beside yeah. a stream? Isn't it cool to know that you're living mm -hmm. sustainably in the world? So we know we can do that. And we know that we need the very best of modern technology, the best and the brightest people to help put this stuff together. Cities are not, it's not Birkenstocks in the natural world. Mm -hmm. How do we recreate cities where most of the people in the world live mm -hmm. so that we get, so that we still understand that we live within the earth? That we, it, it, this is our mother, you know, mm -hmm. it is after all.